Lord, just blow their socks off. I mean, just suddenlies, Father. So I ask for suddenlies in, in these people's lives, in our lives. That there is no explanation other than <laughs> simply you being a good father, a good king, Lord Jesus. Father, we give you praise and glory. Lord, every every seed, every tithe, every offering. Blessings, Lord. Let abundant harvest. That's the only words I can hear right now. Abundant harvest, Lord. Lord, is, Lord, we thank you for the word that's coming forth, whether it Whether it cuts or heals, it doesn't matter, Lord. But Father, we thank you for the word that's coming forth. Yes, Lord. And we receive it yes, Lord. with joy and gladness. Yes. And Lord, we thank you for this opportunity again, again to hear what you're bringing through Pastor Martin White, Lord. Yes. Lord, we pray for blessings upon his life. Yes. Yes. Health. Finances. Amen. And his vehicles remain dependable. Amen. Lord, begin, I mean, just greatly, a, a great abundance in his life. Lord, Amen. Lord. As he sacrifices and he sows his time yeah, yeah. to be your vessel. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father, we give you praise, glory, and honor. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Like he said, we have books on the book table. This is Time the Unfound Friend. If you can find time, you can definitely have the best friend for the rest of your life. But it's amazing how many people live by excuses. See, if you procrastinate, you find yourself walking past the door of opportunity. If you're going to succeed, it's not always about what God gives you. It's about what God has already given you. See, if we can believe in ourselves. See, Satan wants to seduce, sedate, and ensnare. And if he can get you to believe that you can't, you probably never will. But your Bible says, I can. Do. All things through. Last week, I watched the uh, service last week, uh, and that couple was here, and I really enjoyed it. It's great, really good. And then the things that they said about laboring to enter into rest. Now that was awesome. But then it jumped out at me and grabbed me when she said, "Christ in you." The Colossians says, "Christ in you, the hope of glory." But see, Christ in you, and when, when I heard those words, the Lord spoke to me and said, Mark, I'm in you. I feel what you feel. I see what you see. I know what you know. And do you realize that... I, any, of y'all ever, any of y'all ever gone mud digging? Where you purposely go out there and tackle a big mud hole and you don't know how deep it is and you don't know if you'll come out on the other side but you love that water coming in the doors while you rock back and forth to get unstuck that you got yourself into. <laughs> See, opportunities are basically what do you want? Are you negative? Are you pessimistic? Or are you really wanting to have fun? Amen. Because I have found people that have the celebration of victory anticipate every battle. They look forward to kicking butt. I mean, you know, come on, come on, come on, bring it on. <laughs> I mean, and we laughing because we have a history of victory. Amen. But then again, there are those of us that we, we, we almost want to whine, we almost want to cry, we almost want to say, please, no, I've had all I can take. Because be honest with your wounded spirit, who can bear it? 
And I can understand that, but there are times that we can expedite a miracle based upon knowledge. God's people perish for a lack of knowledge. Perish means destitute, means left out of the picture. And I want to put some things in front of you. Uh, while I talk about my last, I just had this printed, just had it published. And uh, before I describe the book, because when I got back from France on Wednesday, this was arrived, the, a box of these books arrived at my house on Thursday. But before I get to that, I want you to think of one thing. Think about it, and I want you to say it three times. 5,000. 5,000. My God, I wish we had videotaped your eyes when, 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 I, knew, when I said that. Because her eyes were... <coughs> you can't see beyond where you're at. That's why you live in the land of regret. If you can't see beyond where you're at, you'll always live in the land of regret. I look back at my life, 48 years of ministry, and I wish to God I joined the Marines when I was 18. Well, my dad was a Marine drill instructor. And the benefit of boot camp, it'll make you a man or a wuss or a wimp, is that not true? It'll bring out the best in you. And some of us, we whine and dine when things are sorrowful all the time. But that's just it. Your victory is greater as he that's... But see, when we look in the mirror, what do you see? Do you see yesterday or do you see tomorrow? Why do you look in the mirror? She is preparing herself for where she's going. How you see yourself in the mirror, ha ha, is your attitude set. It's your faith in action. So I mean, I'm not as pretty as you. You would look good with mascara, you know, because you're just highlighting your highlights. If I put mascara on, I don't think it looked too good on me. <laughs> and let me just set you straight. My wrists don't drop. And if you don't comprehend that, that's because you haven't got a revelation knowledge of what that means. I speak a language that my, not many people can understand. Even I wrote in my book, I had three ladies help me uh, edit to, you know, the book and, and punctuations and spellings. And I made the note in the book, I said, I appreciate three ladies that knew how to translate redneck. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the title of the book is Foundational Roots for Success. And an apple tree is an apple tree not based on its fruit. A fig tree. I got, I got bought me a can of, another can, a jar of fig preserves from Greece the other day. And, uh, that tastes so sweet. And I like strawberry preserves, you know. What's the one that's got the actual fruit in it? Is it preserves or jelly or jam? Preserves. Preserves. Well, I like it when you got the seeds in there. <laughs> and, uh, and in the process of fruit, you, you can say, well, I don't have any fruit. But what makes an apple tree an apple tree or a plum a plum or a Pear, pear, or apricot, is it apricot, 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 depends on where you come from. See, and that's just it, we need to realize we are preparing for where we already are. Now that's a heavy remedy right there. What do you mean? We are preparing for where we already are. I am seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But see, you need to develop the language of heaven. And a language is always preceded with an attitude. This book deals with uh, ten chapters. And it's things and principles that I put in my daughter's life. She turned 17 the other day. I am weeping. I'm sorry. She's growing away from me. I got on to her the other day. I said, your phone is building a wall between us. Yes. Yes. Come on. 
man, her phone, she prioritized, prioritized. I say something, just a minute. <laughs> and, and, and see, I'm, I am preluding the empty eagle's nest. And you say, it's, it's, you don't have to be sad. Oh, I'm not going to be sad when it happens because I'm going to get my sadness out of the way. I'm going to judge myself, least I be judged. But anyway, chapter 1 is always tell the truth. And I have put that word in her and I can always, I can walk up to her and always tell the truth. And then I've got another chapter as love is considerate. And then be, and she said, responsible. And then have integrity. And then pursue excellence. The last chapter I really love, because I wrote eight chapters and the Lord said, add two more. And number nine deals, chapter nine deals with, you know, that when you, when you, you will never fail, because you can always get up. I mean, the word says that a righteous man falls seven times, but that means he can get up. It's always number eight, the new beginning. But I love chapter 10, which is the voice of choice. Because how you you're, carry yourself is an attitude. How you drive, whether you honk them or you're patient. I tend to see to have a honking fit sometimes. <laughs> See, I have a problem with patience when I'm driving because they're not there to get in my way. I'm here to get out of their way. I don't drive for me. I drive for them. I'm trying to get out of your way. So just slide over because I can't stand somebody in the fast lane driving slow. People without a vision perish. They're destitute. And I heard Lester Summerall say, every man of destiny is always in a hurry. And you're a voice of choice based on what you wear, who you keep company with, your attitude, how you look at life, how you respond. But as a man thinks, so is he. And your thoughts precede your actions because we build inside of ourselves the image that we are comfortable with. But our comfort zone is about to be rocked. I mean, uh, the group Petra come out with a song years ago. God made rock and roll for you. Made rock and roll for you. Put it in your soul. Anyway, deliver to everyone. But we are not willing to rock the boat and roll with the flow. Uh, I was in two weeks ago I was in Mountain Home, Arkansas and a minister ministered about the P Peter's shadow and he said I have so much desire to be like Peter and have the anointing of the shadow upon me and I at the, the, when I took the pulpit God wasted him he laughed, he cried off and on, off and on, laugh, cry, laugh, cry tall dude Maybe in his uh, mid sixties, and he would literally lay on the floor and laugh a while, cry a while, laugh a while, cry a while. And I told him this: I said the reason Peter was the only one that had the shadow is because Peter was the only one daring enough to get out of the boat. There's never a shadow without something to block it. There's never a shadow without something to block light. Mm -hmm. Say 5,000. 5, see, you can't see it. So you're not going to believe for it. You can't imagine. I mean, what's Jehovah Rapha? The Lord our healer, right? But is his name also Jehovah Shalom? Yes. No, what's that mean? Peace. The Lord our peace. But what does it mean for him to be called by his primary focus, Jehovah Jireh? 
I'm a firm believer that when you come into His presence, whatever He is, whoever He is, is what He wants to be to you. But we don't come in here expecting much because we can't get past five dollars, more or less, believe God, for five thousand. If you don't exercise, uh, Ross, what's his name? Give me 25. <laughs> the punishment was the stretching of muscles, which gives the, in a, in a, the, gives the enabling ability to overcome. And there are times your lack, the enemy's attack, is purposed by God. To make a man out of you. Amen. And I mean that not gender oriented. But to make a warrior. Instead of a wuss. A wimp. A whiner. A complainer. Because if you are victorious in your mind. Come on. Bring it on brother. I, I take you down. Because we believe. In what we already receive. It's book 15. Excellent book. I mean, man, man, it just flowed. I just wrote it. There's preachers that get sermons and they transcribe their sermons and put them in books. Yeah. I said at the desk on all three of my books in typed, wow. wrote, even designed the book. Now I've after it's been published, I find flat fallacies in, in this thing. <laughs> Misspelled words. And I, I laugh and I crack up and I say, Lord, I wish you would have pointed that at to me something. You know, but like here's what I got on the back of the book. Uh, parenting is an awesome experience, a challenging adventure, the cost of a lifetime, and the greatest experience of God's love. See, I envy you. Because what you're holding is the most pliable, the most lovable investment you'll ever make. Yes. But then when they get big, they don't fit in your lap so well, but they want to get in your pocket. Yeah. They just use you. Usually about maybe the age of 30, 35, they'll come back in your life and say, I'm sorry, because I know what you mean. I, I, I'm a parent now. And I know what responsibility is. But to whom much is given. And that's just it. You've given ability. You're giving God opportunity if you'll seek first the kingdom. Because see, God is wanting to develop you, to correlate you, where it's a team effort without you thinking about it. Ross, when they walk in the room, what happens when they say, Tip, hey! Everybody, without thinking about it, stands up to attention. What is your attention, your focus on? Where are you going with the greatest investment that God has ever given? He has put Christ in you. The expectancy of glory. What is glory? Heaven on earth. But if you don't develop your abilities, if you don't pursue with some consistencies, whose fault is it? Because I pastored up to 300 people and I have pastored with five. And do you realize the small churches are harder to pastor than the larger churches because the larger churches you can delegate, regulate, and even pay people to do your job. But I don't want you to take this negatively, but creatively I want you to see this house is going to have a revolving door. Most churches revolving doors. People come in and go out as far as they're there for a while. Now what I see is a revolving door in this house is people going to the mission field and then coming back. Yes. Like what this yes. Jeanette is doing right now. Yes. This is what I expect yes. in this house. Yes. Where there will be a mission department where, where people constantly be going to the field and coming back. Going to the field and coming back. Going to the field. Yes. Yes. 
Now, I don't want to give what God just told me. Well, he didn't tell me this. He told me that back there sitting in the back. But uh, this book's 15. Time, time the Unfound Friend is 10. And uh, if you want them, you know, praise God. If you don't, don't worry about it. Oh, I've got a yes, I've got to do this. Uh, anyway, uh, the greatest experience of God's love is while learning to love like God. And that's how it is with kids. They spit in your face. They cuss you out. They steal from you. They take your money. They take advantage of your mercy, your grace. Isn't that how we treat God? But it's new. His mercy is new every morning. He is faithful when we are faithless. Anyway. See, this book deals more with discipling. Yes. But I do tell a couple stories, you know, experiences, you know, like when I went squirrel hunting one time, I saw on the top of a tree a hornet's nest. I put my gun down, go back to the house and get a hatchet or get an axe, cut the tree down. Hornets are whoo, forming. I let the hornets calm down. And then I take a handkerchief, stick it on a stick, stick it in the, hand, in the door of the hornet's nest and, and twist it. Where it's blocking you from coming out, I cut that limb off and I'm carrying that live hornet's nest back to the house like a live peacock. <laughs> this actually happened. I really did it. And yes, I might be that stupid in your world. <laughs> but you don't walk on water if you're afraid about what everybody else thinks. You're not going to get out of the boat if you think about what everybody else thinks. And, and see, the just shall live by faith. And if you begin to believe, then you can receive. I mean, I love staring at trees when the wind's blowing. Because it reminds me of the word the Lord he gave me. He said, Mark, look at the trees. And I'm watching, man, I'm going through hell. And, and I dreaded, I love the guys. But they would try to indoctrinate me from their point. Their, they, they believe Satan was God's right hand, left hand and Jesus God's left hand. And then we debated scriptures back and forth. And I love them to this day. I would call them my best friends because they provoked me to righteousness. I secured myself in what I believed by them challenging me in what I believed. Some of us, we can't handle getting weary and well-doing. We can't stand up and be strong going through the battle. Because we're, we're not comprehending that we are being perfected. Because see, we are, we, a, a fruit tree is a fruit tree. Irregardless of no flowers, no leaves. What makes an apple tree an apple tree or a pear or a plum? I mean, I am looking so... Y'all haven't had your first frost up here yet, have you? I am so looking forward to Thanksgiving. There's a church in Wheeler, Illinois. Love them people. Fabulous. But I had the best persimmon pudding. Because has anybody ever had the boldness to take a bite out of a persimmon? You're talking about making your life romantic. It will make you pucker up. It will draw your lips and there's nobody to kiss. <laughs> but the first frost is when the fruit starts to ripen. Your cold environment, the patience of waiting. I've been summer and we're in the fall. I don't see how raccoons can steal all of the persimmons when it tastes so nasty. <laughs> But if you're not out there after the first frost when it starts to ripen and that which was bitter to the taste becomes sweet. Your battle, your situation, your circumstance, your lack, the hell you're going through, your husband's attitude, your kid's rebellion. Are you going to let Satan manipulate you? Are you going to fight the good fight of faith and be the overcomer? For as He is, so are we. Because if you're going to grow up in Christ, if you're going to grow from a technon to a technion to a quios, if you're going to become mature, 
the proof of maturity is its willingness to become responsible. And being responsible, you, I'm sorry to tell you this. Yeah, I guess you can, but how do I say this? Excuse me, it's rude for me to leave y'all, but I'm with, I, I gotta talk to him first. <laughs> see, I gotta live with him forever. Ain't no guarantee I'm gonna see y'all again. So you know, you know, just just be patient. He has priority. And that's just it, the way it is with responsibility. You make time. Because you, you leave a message on your phone. Leave a message and I call you back. And you're a liar. I don't want to talk to them. And you don't call them back on purpose. But you gave your word. Psalm says, He will ascend into the holy hill that swears to his own hurt and changes not. Your word is your bond. Yes. And, and if you make, I mean, the word talks about God hates those that make a vow and don't keep it. Because what is about God is His integrity. But what is about your eternity is your integrity. And if you don't nurture the quality, the purity, the holiness of God yes, in you, how can you expect to carry the glory when you've got heaven on the outside or is it heaven on the inside and hell on the outside? How do you look in the mirror? Because how you see yourself is how you adjust yourself. And if you're content where you're at, that's called lukewarm. Passivity. You know, because see, either you're passionate. Because children, disciples, are reproduced because of intimacy. Passion. Drive. Hunger. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst. And are you hungry? Because God's going to visit this house and make his, his, his abode here. But that's just it. Some of you are going to get bypassed with the anointing and the gifts and the power because you, what you do in private is who you are in public. And, and in pastoring all my years, I believe in God plays baseball. Strike one, strike two, strike three. I, would, I, I didn't care if my, my elders had a fist fight outside. But they better come inside with their arms wrapped around each other. Because see, week one is strike one. That means you got a problem. But week two is that you don't want to deal with the problem or you've already dealt with it. Week three is either you get a home run or me and you will sit down and talk. Because there's grace, there's mercy, then there's judgment. And the purpose of judgment is to keep the Achans out of the glory. You say, who's Achan? The dude that God killed and his family because the blessings were lifted and the curses were given because they were instructed not to steal or take anything from the victory of the battle in Jericho. But they hid. But you can hide from everybody else like Ananias and Sapphira. But you can hide nothing from God. And to whom much is given. We're coming into the glory. And the glory is going to rest upon you. But are you going to let the jealousy, the gossip, the slander rest within you? Are you going to judge yourself lest you be judged? Because, be, be honest with you, green fruit, I used to love. I'd go out to the plum orchard in June. We had a wild plum orchard in two locations where I grew up. I grew up on a bayou. And man, we always had to watch for snakes because if snakes love plums too. But man, I love them. Pucker power green plums. <laughs> man, I just love them. And then they start turning. But they were tasted so good. Some of you are a rogue. 
You don't want to flow with what God's doing external because you're not submitting to what God is wanting to do inside of you internal. When a, uh, Ross, when a man is uh, AWOL, what's that? AWOL, what's that stand for? Absent without leave. Accountability. Accountability. See, I'm, for someone to bishop your soul and neglect you in how you grow means that they can go to heaven and you go to hell. Our, I prophesied in France about eight years ago. This is my 23rd trip to Paris, France. I was praying about it on the airplane trip because it's like flying in a sardine can. And if you know anything about sardines, they're tightly compressed. But uh, I said, Lord, can we stop at 25? <laughs> but in reality, you are being trained to be the Lord's army. Yes. And you can't fight together unless you work together. And I don't want to be paranoid of you and your lack of self-discipline that you panic when the enemy's attacking and you shoot me in the back instead of shooting at the devil. Because if God is going to bring us together where we have an outpouring, because many people can't walk by faith, because they always trip over what they can't see. We need the eyes of faith, having the ability to see beyond where we're at. Because if we believe I can do all things through Christ, so fruit trees and a fruit tree based on its roots, not based on its fruit. Because you can graft a peach to a plum and get a nectarine. I ate this fruit the other day that's apricot and plum. But the root is still the root. And some of us, we are not nurturing the development of the gifts and callings of God. And we get offended when we're overlooked. Believe me, being patient is the stability of your peace. Yes. If you have no patience, you will lose your peace. Yes. When you lose your peace, you will begin to dwindle in your joy. And when you dwindle in joy, your pliability of being a servant is conditional of what pleasures you instead of what pleases Him. Because Jesus gives the analogy of the servant takes the lower seat and waits to be invited to the higher. But there are those that take the higher seat are, and they are embarrassed and offended when they are asked to step down and let someone else take their seat. Been there, done that. Got the t-shirt and the hat. Come here, darling, don't leave yet. I know you're headed. Stop right there, lady in the orange, October. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's get behind her now. Catch her. Bye. I didn't want you to leave without me blessing you. Preventative maintenance. <laughs> but anyway, green fruit. Some of you are green, and you are just as precious today as you will be when you're proven. Because see, a vessel that's fit for the master's use. I mean, there's vessels of honor and there's vessels of dishonor. And if you're going to be a vessel of honor fit for the Master's use. You know those vessels that in John 2, Mary said, Jesus turned this into water and Jesus said, Woman, it's not my time. And she said, Forget you. Do what I tell you. And they took the water from the vessels. But this was foot washing water. This was the water that was repetitively used 
to wash the guest's feet. <laughs> Let them party by themselves. You'll get invited sooner or later. Say 5,000. 5,000. Let's see, your eyes got a little brighter that time and stuff. Because see, we're at Dormancy. We, we literally believe He is who He is. And he, and he doesn't lie. But when it comes to Him embracing you as a father, yeah. we only crawl in His lap when we're crying. Ain't that right? Yeah, I'm looking at you. So who are you looking at, Nanya? <laughs> Give me an interpretation of that prophecy. None of your business. Yeah, you must say it, Lord. Hallelujah. Fruit, green fruit. But man, when the fruit started ripening is when the snakes started gathering. I was raised on a bank. Literally, alligators. Water moccasins, duck, geese, nutri rats. You say, what's a nutri rat? A beaver with a rat's tail. Yep. I had three ducks. Pete, Reed, Pete, and Ditto. Yeah. I did. I really had three ducks. But then we'd find my ducks was dead, but there was no blood in them. The life got sucked out. I know it wasn't no gator. I mean, I come out there with my 22 shooting at an alligator swimming toward my 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 my, uh, my Labrador retriever. And that stupid thing just out there swimming around, swimming around. And alligators love eating dogs. I couldn't remember we'd get in the boat and go out there to the tall tree. We'd climb the tree. Me and four other guys in the boat. I'm climbing up. I reach up. My hand's there and I'm looking. There's a water box laying on that limb. Wow. I'm trying to get down. <laughs> that guy underneath me is trying to get up. <laughs> and when I said snake, they all, whoa, whoa, they started. And then it was that snake slither. And I saw him fall in the water right beside the boat. Saw him swim off. And we still went swimming. You heard that. Woo! That was not a heaven sound. That was a fleshy sound. A confession of fear. Because we're afraid to walk on water. What if I sink? We're afraid to try to raise the dead. What if we don't? We don't want to cast out death. I mean, I remember going... There are things that is so... inept in your eyes but enabled in God's yes. there's so much talent so much gift so much anointing that you literally I feel sorry for you because God is going to judge you when you could have ruled a reign in heaven you're just going to have to stay on earth and wave palm leaves on the sea of glass because the Holy Ghost could not get you to read Psalm 23 to trust because the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want say 5,000 5, because if you can't believe God to get five dollars if you can't believe God to get 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 100 if you can't believe God to get out of debt how can you believe God for abundance You say you're a prosperity preacher? Yes, and I'll take all the money you don't want. <laughs> because most people that don't believe in prosperity don't believe in tithing. That's true. That's true. Because for you not to tithe, you're attacking God's character. Yes. And say, I don't believe that you watch over your word that you might quit and you perform it. I don't believe that you rebuke my devourer. I don't believe that you're going to pour out a blessing upon me that I cannot contain. So Lord, I can steward 10% better than you can. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You know, light 
does not create the shadow. Blockage of the light creates the shadow. Peter's flesh, he walked in the glory so much that as he is, so are we in this world. He is the light and he gives us, according to St. John, to be the light. But the shadow is created in Peter from his flesh. But Peter was bold enough to get out of the boat. Peter was confident enough to say, No, Jesus, you're not going to be crucified. And your Bible says, Come and let us reason together that though your sins be as scarlet, they should be as white as snow. He said, Let us reason together. God wants to talk to you about your weakness so He can begin to get you to realize greater is He. Because, Mark, 9.23 says, If you can believe, all things are restricted and limited. No, it says, If you can believe, all things are possible. Can I pray for you in the yellow-orange sweater? Step out in the aisle, please, darling. My leg is bad. Well, your healing just took place. Are you sure your leg is bad? <laughs> Come on, get down. Come on. Let's get, get down tonight. Oh, oh, oh. Get down tonight. But who said you're going to fall? Hands off the chest. But that's just it. See, it's not in the falling. So bend your legs. You sure? Yeah. Well, see, that's where she's at. I will hit this floor and I don't want to. But see, that's where she's at. Because see, if we base our past, our future on our past, we have a leash on our tomorrow. But your Bible says forgiving. I know it hurts. But see, I brought you forward because God told me to. Take your finger, just your little witty bitty finger. You can take your pinky if you want. And, and you can just touch her knee slightly. You ain't gonna fall, darling. Ooh, I got kind of Hallelujah. A shadow is only created because of blockage. But Psalm 23 says he's going to prepare a table before you in the presence of your, of your enemies. We won't enjoy the meal that the Lord gives us because we're paranoid of what our enemies are thinking about us while we're eating from the Lord's table. You have a seat. And we'll do it again. But then again, if you want to jump up and just run, go for it. Thank you. Because see, that's just it. If I am going to preach something, I should practice what I preach. Because, see, we believe in Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, that you're here. See, 5,000. 5,000. I got some money in the mail the other day from the state of Louisiana. Totally unexpected. Now, my dad died five years ago. And they said that there was an insurance policy that was not paid out. So they took it upon themselves to cash it. And distributed amongst the five siblings. Yeah. Now, the wealth of, well, no, my dad ain't wicked. He's he, he the assembly of God pastor and my mentor. But what lay dormant for years, God brought forward. Yes. Yes. I got $100 in the mail because there's somehow the state of Tennessee said I overpaid somebody. So they sent me money. Do you realize, there's this guy on YouTube I watch periodically, he gets a snorkel and a goggles and a screwdriver and he swims in creeks and looks under rocks and he's finding gold in Tennessee and Georgia and Alabama and creeks all over the United States. There's a little gold nugget. In, in, in Georgia, there's people digging in North Georgia to find these diamonds. It's a diamond mine. Same thing in Arkansas. There's money everywhere, but we're not looking for it. There is the ability of being a creator of opportunity and starting a business. 
Look, I done stole Shackley. I done been with Amway. I done been with Malaluka. I, I mean, you know, the products are great, but I couldn't sell you Jesus if it wasn't for the anointing. But see, if you don't try, you've already failed. So, and you say, this is getting to be a long sermon. Well, I'm preaching to the recording so that the people that want to listen will keep with me. Because the Word says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart. That's priority. Because you know something? Is that your baby? You know your baby's cry above anybody else's baby. And that's just that intimacy draws you. And, and we find ourselves not humbling ourselves in the sight of God unless we need something. But anyway, the voice of choice, your attitude, your facial expression, your body language, your conversations is a voice of choice. You choose. Whether or not you want to comb your hair, you choose whether or not you want to shave, you choose whether or not you want to wear makeup, you choose how you decorate yourself to go in how you respond to people. How is it we don't prepare ourselves in our attitude of humility? And, and the word says, He that exalts himself should be abased, but he that humbles himself shall be exalted. And that means. The word says to offer up the sacrifice. Of, a sacrifice is what is painful, costly. The sacrifice of Christ. I don't feel like it. My feet hurt. My, look, when y'all are standing up, I'm sitting back there. Because I tell you, well, sometimes my back hurting. And, and plus, I don't think it's fair you sit down while I'm standing up. So I take my turn and I sit down while you're standing up. That's fair, ain't it? What's good for the goose is good for the gander. But where we're at right now is in the transition mode of shifting. And some of you, this is the last day of the Feast of Trumpets. Is that not true? And if you really want to get under the shepherd's rod where the shepherd said, promote them, bless them, what are you going to do with the rest of today? Worship is an attitude. Watch this. Watch this. Give me a favor and stick your tongue out at me. See, you can't laugh without an attitude. But then again, you can cry and laugh, can't you? But as far as self pity, oh, I hope God. I feel sorry for myself. Now, you don't get into the grieving aspect, you don't take yourself out of light without embellishing darkness. And when I looked at those trees, the Lord said, what you can't see is moving what you see. I want to know something. Is God developing you to own property on a foreign nation? To have two passports? Is God developing you where you can go the mission? Because, see, as a man desires, Psalm 37 says, Delight thyself in the Lord thy God, and He'll give you the desires of your heart. But we don't desire because we don't delight, because we only see getting off of this earth and going to heaven when the issue, I am not anti-rapture, but I am pro-rapture, pre-trib. But I believe in the glory of God's going to start falling. And I see... Some of you don't say 5,000. 5, See, that's it. You don't expect the preacher to give you a cashier's check of five grand. You just say, uh, see, your pessimistic negativity of religion has got you always thinking the preacher wants your money more than wants you to have money. But there's going to be times when the offering is going to be multiplied. There will be meetings where the IRS will count it if they're still in existence. And it will multiply every time they count it. We serve an El Shaddai. 
God that is more than enough. And He is Jehovah Jireh. The Lord that sees and provides. He lives in you. Christ in you. You've got to labor to enter into rest. You need to learn how to chill out. Because we've already won. But we're pampering this thing that curses us called flesh. I like my flesh. I'm a man of faith, George. I go in front of the mirror and I call those things that be not as though they are. I say, you good looking, right? I used to say that until my wife started throwing water on the fire. Yeah, it's amazing how one word can pierce your heart. But see, if you need to learn how to guard your heart, because out of your heart come the issues of, not death, the issues of life. What realm do you want to live in? Because you may not have any fruit, but you still have a root. And the root is the determining factor of the fruit. And a tree can withstand a storm wind when its roots are deep. Pine trees don't have deep roots. They have them scattered out like spider webs. The wind blows, they poof, fall over. But oak trees have that tap root, go deep. What are you made of? Your past or your future? Because if I'm seated in heavenly places, if I am as He is, so am I in this world. If the greater one is in me, when I heard that last week of laboring, it jumped out. And, I, and He said, Christ in you. He said, I feel what you feel. And the Word says He is a, he, he's closer than a brother. My brother would stick his arms around me. And say, we're going to see this together. We're going to get through this. Because I can do all things through Christ. But as a man thinks, so is he. So if I cannot change my self-worth in my eyes, you've also diminished your worth in the world's eyes because you are not giving them your potential. You're giving them your fear of the what-ifs and the yeah-buts and the I-don't-knows. But greater is he that's in me. So, I want to bring a close to this message focusing on certain areas. A man's pride shall bring him low, is what Proverbs 29 says. But honor shall come upon the humble in spirit. Chapter 30 of Proverbs deals with the ant. The conies are the rabbits. Locusts, spiders. Says they have no king, but they have a nature. And ants, they work during the summer to prepare for a winter. Everybody here can have a savings account if you'll just empty your change, your loose change out every day. Because it will develop if you're not robbed from the kitty. You can build yourself up to a place where you owe no man nothing but love. But do you realize you owe yourself integrity? You owe yourself responsibility. You owe yourself to tell the truth. And not lie to yourself. Because what makes mama a good mama is not that she got a good baby. But the baby is the attribute of what mama invests in. And God so loved that He gave. He gave you the best that heaven had to offer. And we don't see ourselves the way He sees us. In Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but I live by the faith. Faith is expectancy. Faith is the things hoped for, desired. I wrote this the other day on Facebook. Because a friend of mine got heartbroken from his own son. And I told him plain out, I said, Did endure the pain because you need to keep hoping for God to fix this yeah. Yeah. even if you're in an abyss yeah. 
What is an abyss? It's a continuous falling and getting darker and darker and you don't see no hope. Hope in your abyss. Have faith in God's faithfulness because what's meant for your hurt is going to work for your good. Because if greater is He that is in you, you have to develop it. Because the rabbit hides in the rocks to keep the, from the hawk eating it. The ant is in sequence in harmony without thinking about it. There's an inner nature in you that if you don't cultivate it, if you don't practice the piano, you can't play it. And it takes harmony. So, I'm going to speak this, and I don't mean this to be offensive. It's not what I want to say, but it's what God keeps giving me to say. This house will be have a reputation Some of us, we are not comprehending that we are setting a precedent yeah. of how they see us. Yeah. Yeah. And if they begin to recognize... Put your hand on your leg, please, darling. Yeah, you. Just that one, the one that bothers you. You're going to feel the anointing come out of your hand into your leg. I used to get in the cotton field practicing walking on water. I did. I always wound up muddy. I'd get out there and I'd, I'd try to park the water. Never did park. I'd get in front of the, the couch and I'd lay hands and see, and I'd practice falling under the anointing. But then again, it takes childlike faith to get. Because except you enter the kingdom as a little child. One time I was out there fixing the practice. I've been preaching a meeting. I go practice walking on water. And the Holy Ghost said, if you're serious about walking on water, go in, the, and go in there and get your suit and tie on instead of your swimsuit. <laughs> Are you practicing your faith or practicing your fear? Wow. So let me bring this to a close. This house will be known of the house of relationships. There will be many people that will meet their mate in this house. Because it's going to be a revolving door. I gave you a word and you got married. I just had another lady. I gave her a word. She got married a month ago. A couple, week, a couple years ago, I gave a word to a lady. said, you're going to Peru. And she told me, after, I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> But then she's already been to Peru three times since then. I'm telling you that your relationship has everything to do with your attitude. And my relationship with my daughter might be that I have to love more than she says she loves me because words are empty. Actions. And she says, I love you, Dad. My youngest son. Oh, I enjoy this here lately. He goes out of his way now to hug my neck and tell me he loves me. But I can remember when he spit in my face. I can remember when he's cussing me out. I can remember when I'm walking with him and I can't breathe when I'm climbing the hill and he's comparing me to his friends, Dad, and they ain't, they ain't out of shape. Two weeks later, I have open heart surgery. Nobody was there when I went in. And nobody was there when I come out. But am I going to hold vengeance or am I going to operate like God? Because it was the Holy Ghost that told me. He said, go to the emergency room now. Cardiologist and test, stress test, ultrasound test. Ain't nothing wrong with you. Ain't nothing wrong with you. And I, I obey the Holy Ghost. When I get in the truck to go, I said, go get your charger. When he said, get your charger for your cell phone, this is something. Yeah. So I go to the emergency room and I tell them, I've been dealing with jaw pain three weeks and they did blood work. Man, they immediately gave me nitroglycerin. I told them what the cardiologist said. They immediately stuck a camera up in my vein and they said, we got, you've got what we call a widow maker. Wow. Only 10% of people with a widow maker live. 
They said, do you want us to cut you open and fix it or take you, you just go home? I said, just knock me out and have fun. <laughs> and I did. They did cut me open. But there two weeks in the ICU. I mean, on the day that I'm going to leave the hospital, these multi-big needles fell out of my arm and I'm bleeding like a water fountain. And the blood everywhere on the floor and I'm mashing that red button, mashing, nobody coming, nobody coming. But it's when I got out of my room, started messing up their hallway, then when they started running toward me. Some of these people will mess up your life to produce the proof of what you are. Because if you're easily offended, you got internal problems. You're walking around with a chip on your shoulder. Don't tell me you're full of love when you growl. <laughs> but anyway, that's just water under the bridge. But I have over... You see, one, on one night, 30 people from my home church came at the same time. Totally unplanned. The hospital freaked out. We never had 30 people come at once to one man's room. And they came individually. God orchestrated it. See, if I cannot overcome your opinion of me, how can I overcome the devil's opinion of me? If I can't be as he is, if I can't overcome your neglect, your regret, if I cannot overcome your attitude, if I can't love like God when... I love you when you don't want to be loved. And I give you mercy every morning when you don't want to, me to, to hug you. I still want to hug you. Because God every day wants to hold you. God every day wants to bless you. He is Jehovah Rapha as much as He is Jehovah Jireh. Wow. Say 5,000. 5,000. Can you say 10,000? 10,000. Your faith has started growing a little bit. Because see, if you don't expect it, you don't get it. The faith is what you're expecting. I've been there where they repoed my vehicle. I've been there when I got evicted. I've been there, but I know faithful. Faithful is He. I've been there when I moved my couch by myself, my refrigerator, my, ref my, my, my dryer and washer. I just used piano dollies. Had no help putting it in storage because I couldn't pay my bills. You say, but where was God working in me His good work? Because yes. blessed is a man that endures temptation. For if he is faithful, he, when he's tried, he'll receive a crown of life. Can you be faithful when it seems like you're faithless? Can you commit when it seems like other people don't care? Because faith works by love and love believes the best and love endures long and love suffers long. But love takes no account of evil. Papa, I love you. You hear me? I'm looking at you, old man. <laughs> I said I love you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Some of us, we don't comprehend how much God loves us. He loves you. Amen. He loves you. Uh, I'm trying to work down to shut it down, but you, if this is not just for you, but it's for the people that's listening to. Are you a vessel in honor? Jeremiah said there are vessels that they leak. Jeremiah chapter 2. They, you can't keep the glory in your life. You can't keep because every time you go through something that puts a crack in you, a break in you, you, you start leaking out the glory and you don't refresh yourself every day with Jesus. You don't go to bed with Jesus. You don't wake up with Jesus. But you only need Jesus when you need something. So, yes sir, he told me forget y'all about your time. <laughs> Psalms chapter 8, and I shared this with the uh, Jeanette in the Philippines. Praise God, this is pretty. I'd hate to mess it up with my sweat. Go for it. 
That's all for you. It's, it, it's raining, it's pouring, the old man is snoring. <laughs> but in Psalms chapter 8, it says, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. Now you need to read Psalms 8. It is fabulous. But then Matthew chapter 21. Jesus says. When they're criticizing him. Because they're crying out Hosanna. They rebuke Jesus. And, 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 and criticize him. Because people are giving glory to him. But Jesus quotes out of Psalm 8. And he says this. Have you never read? Here's now what they're saying. They're criticizing Jesus. And, and because they're crying out, Hosanna, our Lord, save us. I got, they say, I have, oh, no, it ain't nowhere back there. I'm sorry. I don't need it now. Anyway, I had a preacher tell me when I started preaching, says, Mark, don't drink in front of the people unless you have to. Then they, he said, they start desiring. They start craving water. They want to drink from your cup. So I learned how to die to my need. Temptation. That's what you did. You brought me a temptation. I was sent. <laughs> was it pity? <laughs> anyway, the word says here, Yea, have you never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings? Thou hast perfected praise. You know what perfected praise is? Worship. You can praise without an attitude. There's a sacrifice of praise. I don't feel like it. But worship is an attitude. Yes, Lord. When we give everything. Yes. When we give our undivided attention. And it's all of you. I've had it all what life could give. But what I want is more of you. More of you. More of you. But I don't want God to take me home. Because there's lives that I'll never reach. There's people that I'll never embrace. There's demon butts I'll never kick. If I die just to get off this earth. I want to see victory in your life. I, would, I don't mean to be offensive, sir, but I would love for you, for some odd reason, whether you do or you don't, I don't care. I would love for you to win the lottery of a million dollars plus. <laughs> just as long as you tie to this house. <laughs> you can send me an offering later. <laughs> you say, well, that's gambling. You're gambling when you get in your car and drive. <laughs> I called my daughter my next breath because when she was five in my life I had lost everything. Went through divorce. It's God tells me to stay in hotels instead of rent a house. I said, God, this don't make sense. Trust me. And I believe God day by day for money to come in. And one day it's snowing outside and it's 20 degrees. And I, God said, check out the hotel. I went checked out and then I found out I only had $8 in my account after I paid my hotel bill. So I got my five-year-old daughter with me and it's snowing, 20 degrees. And I called someone and I said, can I come sleep in, your, in the garage? And they said, tell me yet, we'll send somebody to come get down to Grace. I said, no thank you. And I called my dad. He wired me $50 which got me in the hotel room. The next day I went and checked my mailbox and it was over 700 and something dollars in my mailbox. Yes. Unexpected. Yes. Say 5,000. 5, but see, if you can't believe God, my boys got embarrassed by me. Because for years, I have made this statement that when I find money on the floor, I'll go crawl under a table for a penny. You see, that's poverty mentality. You it is. Ben Franklin said a penny saved is a penny earned. 
hundred pennies is a one dollar. That's it. Amen. Thousand pennies. So what might be poverty mentality to you is that I owe no man nothing but love is where my faith is at. So I'll crawl on tables and I'll make a statement that wonderful positive change is happening to me, through me, and for me. Amen. Years ago when I first came to Nashville, my life was threatened, my children's life was threatened. But God sent me there. My first sermon, I'm standing in the pulpit and I said, I refuse to share the pulpit with Ahab and Jezebel. And then I looked down and the former pastor and his wife is in the front row. I took the flowers off of the communion table. Said, I don't know what God's doing. But I took them off and I crawled on the communion table. And I said, God said, I'm a living sacrifice. And as I stayed there, the former pastor was exposed to sleeping with five women in the church. Wow. Stealing the offering. I, I love the phrase that you said. I love it. I love it. Because I've been believing God to give me back the office of pastor. Because I want to pastor. There's stability and consistency in pastoring. Well, traveling, I'm... Places that, I mean, I drive to Florida... 14 hours, get $275. It took $250 in gas round trip. I made $25. Three days of seeing God show up. But are you willing? I go to church in Mountain Home, which is north of Clinton, and all they guaranteed me was 100 But then again, I made enough to pay a truck note. But says, where's your faith at? Because you think you got to have an offering for somebody to walk up and put money in your hand? You think you got to stand behind the pulpit to have a voice? Get real. God is omnipresent. He is omnipresent. No, He is omniscient. And some of the limits we're experiencing is a double-minded man is unstable all his ways and let him not think he'll get anything from God. And if God is not moving, are you a yo-yo up and down with your faith? Is your emotions, your, your, you know, your, your battles, your, your whining, your dining? Where are you at? Because see, ordained praise. Sabbath the devil. Ordained strength. When you begin, you say Sabbath, yes, Sabbath is considered a day of what? Rest. Yes. You make the devil back off with your attitude. Yes, Lord. When you begin to worship Him and I don't feel like it. When you begin to praise Him and you don't feel like it. Yes. You make yourself read your Bible when you don't feel like it. Yes, you have to make yourself seek God. That's a sacrifice. Yes. But before long, that feels good. Got a nail in my hand. Hallelujah. Because I take up my cross and I follow Him. And I anticipate Him saying, Well done! How good and faithful. Have I made sense? Because see, this house is going to grow. And some of you, your broken sister, you've got the potential and the ability to hold a lot of the glory, a lot of the fresh oil, a lot of the wine. But your lifestyle is you're pessimistic, whining, dining, poor little baby. Because you don't fix the things in your life that God tells you to. You want to complain about it. Because when I get to heaven, am I going to get to live there and think like I do on earth? Talk like I do on earth? Well, I'll get a new body, but the same you as you. You might get a new body, but your thinking is you. And you have to crucify your flesh. You, I'm hungry. You think they deliver pizza? It's easier to call somebody else to do what I want to do. When I'm too lazy to go in the kitchen and cook or wash dishes. I'm sorry, darling. I don't have a dishwasher. And my dishes pile up. And I can say, well, I'm letting them soak because it's easier to wash. But when I run out of spoons and I run out of plates, I finally humble myself and stand there. 
Are you, are you getting to the end of your road that you're, you're, you're not wanting to do something, but do you know that if you don't do something, you're going to go without? God's in that. Because He's working in you. The potter's shaping the clay. He's taking what's meant for your hurt to work for your good. When you can sing room despair and agony on me and deep dark depression, excessive misery, if it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. When I prophesied to you those three times about a husband, didn't I? You looked at me like I was, I ain't never getting married again. Can I have an amen? Amen. But God, it's easier for God to take you in your future. If all we've got is the memory of our past. Because if you can't forget those things that are behind you, how can you press toward the mark? Can I pray for you? I, I, I don't want to offend you. I mean, like I said, it would be great. But I see things beyond people's logic. That's my purpose. But if he won the lottery, he's going to be codependent upon investment. And you have a sound, and the word I hear is tranquility. You have a harmony of stability. And God says there is a reality in your life of properties. Do I make sense with that? Step out here. I want to bless you. Because see, I want him. I'm sorry, sir, if you if you if you if you if you want to buy a thousand dollars of lottery tickets, I don't care. It might be the one you find that somebody else dropped. That caused you to win. Because I want you to win. Catch her now. Favor. 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 I see a cow pasture. The fence is being moved. But I see. It's like literally you own the property. And I see a quick stop store gas station being put there but because you obeyed God and bought it when it was nothing God made it something which causes you to have more who's her there's a black guy I esteem highly and he started out with the words that put him in history I have a dream do you do you have a dream to go beyond where you're at? Can you... It just blows me away the whole service. No Yahoo is sitting on the front. All of y'all sitting in the back like you're Baptists. If, if there's cigarette butts at the door, I know this is a Baptist church. Hush, Pop. I gotta find my... Anointed rag. <laughs> but you don't see beyond where you're at. Do you have a dream? If you got a desire, you can acquire. If you don't pursue, you won't do. And if you can believe, if you can believe, if you can believe, if you can believe, but people give up when a child dies. Oh! Because we're weeping over our loss instead of having confidence that Jesus said we can raise the dead. Instead of maintaining the strength of my emotions, I said, Come back to me in Jesus' name. Life, come back to her. No, but we want to embrace and grieve and weep and embrace because of our selfish fear. Fear is the most selfish thing in your life. Because it's all about self-preservation. But so is pride. Self-exhortation. And that's where fear has torment. Can I bless you again? I was back there. And I looked over here. And I saw her man on his knees with his arms raised. And I saw a picture of him in Facebook. But he's going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Step out there as soon as you do. I see this mission field, the evangelist anointing. Fire! By. And he's going to go with you. A lady I used to pastor, Marcel. 
Her husband was backslid the whole time. Said she wanted to go to the mission field. She went to Venezuela because he said, I want to go where you want to go. And they sold their house and moved to Venezuela. Wow. And started Bible schools in Venezuela and in Colombia. Wow. Went to villages. And up and down the Amazon. Your back is healed. You can have a seat. Some of us, you don't see yourself beyond where you're at. But the purpose uh, uh, of Apostle Jeanette, the purpose of the awesomeness of her husband, he supports her in everything she's doing. And that is so awesome. They have a strong marriage, a great marriage, great kids. You see, you don't know what I know, but you don't know what God knows. Because his attitude, his opinion is really the only one that counts. Amen. Amen. And how can two walk together unless there's agreement? Amen. Can I pray for you to get a job better than you got and make more money than you have? Because I'm sorry to tell you this, but you're, it's time that you come up to upper management. It's time that you quit being bossed and start being the boss. Because the greatest leaders are the greatest servants. Man, give me a restaurant that's full of waiters and waitresses that put up with a bunch of bull yeah. Yeah. and serve relentlessly and get tipped with pennies. Yeah. But I speak blessings upon you. I speak a, a brick house, two stories. I command even a basement to be favored by you. Yeah. A fenced in yard for your kids yeah. and a dog to run around in. Yeah. But I speak yeah. blessings over you. See, where you're going is, 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 is your battle might be severe. The enemy's trying to tear you apart. You'll be flattered. The devil's picking on you. Yeah. I had the flu try to get me last week. Drunk two gallons of orange juice. You say, why? Works for me. <laughs> Can I pray for you again, drug prophetess? Come here. I don't want you to do nothing except sit there and make out a check. But God told me to let you prophesy. Amen. I did hear him say that it, I did actually hear him uh, in the worship say that it's time to uh, let's see how he said that. Literally get rid of all the stakes. You know, he used to tell us to move our stakes and enlarge the borders. But I did hear him say that it's time to literally remove all the states yes. because there are no borders. Amen. You know, we're yes. living in a time and a season now of acceleration. And there's been thunder in secret places. But there are those of us that are hearing the thunder and are answering the call. And there isn't going to be any limitation. And he's been talking about the provision that's coming upon the people of God that are willing. And really, uh, I think it's this guy. I forgot his name already. I'm new. But uh, he did say uh, that it doesn't matter if you're talking to one person or a thousand. Right. Right. And this man was also saying that he's pastored five people and 300. And it really wouldn't matter exactly who you think you are right now. Uh, but as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And so if you know today that he had, you've heard his voice, and you know that in your heart, it doesn't matter if you feel like you're just like new in this or if you've been seasoned for a long time. Your voice is needed in the earth. Amen. And all of creation is groaning and travailing for the manifestation of the sons yes. of God. And it really is time. And he's right. Five dollars or five thousand, it really wouldn't even matter, would it? Um, but it, that's what I hear. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now there it is again. You got a message in tongues to give. Yes.
Yeah. It just means go. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't have to interpret that, do I? <laughs> Stay with her. You are her shadow. Oh, oh. If she follows him, have somebody look at you after oh. church. Oh. 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 That's it. Yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. yeah. Oh. yeah. yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh. I just do want to say, though, that this perfect law of liberty <laughs> is being decreed in all of the earth. Yes. And it's not about any reputation except his glory. Yes. 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 And the yes. knowledge oh, yeah. of his glory covering the earth even as the waters cover the sea. And there's no height of depth that will separate you from your calling. Might as well just... You did on Oh my God. I'm the one who tried to send water to my fault. I didn't want you to bring chicken. Can I bless? Can I bless? You don't own where you're at, do you? But I want you to own where you're going. Is that okay? Yes. Yes. But you see, it is important to you. And what's important to you is important to him. Yes. 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 Divine connections I speak. Divine relationships God creates. Being in the right place at the right time, God is going to cause things to start to flow in line. And that which you never thought you could pursue is going to be a gift from God given to you. A fruit tree that is picked before its time. See, they pick things before its time at the supermarket. And it doesn't have the sweetness to it. It doesn't have the the, the purpose. It, it just is blah. Yeah. Amen. But when you've endured, and blessed is the man that endures. Yes. If you can endure the hell you're going through, you can experience some heaven. Absolutely. Amen. But don't be a dog chasing your tail. Come on. Amen. Because you're going nowhere. My son's got a dog. It's a it's, a, it's a, the dog that they have for Target. It's oh, Jack Russell Terrier. It's what? It's a Jack Russell Terrier. No, it's not a Jack Russell. It's white. Anyway, it looks like a, a possum in its face. That dog chases his tail one way to turn and chases his tail back again. Circle after circle. If your life is in a circle, you need to stop. And take account of what you want and where you're at. Because you're not going to go home if you don't know where you're at. You're not going to go eat if you don't know what you want. And you're not going to graduate high school if you listen to your friends. To see our friends that say they care about us really don't care until they hold us with our tears and provoke us to be the best that we can be. Stand up. Face that way. Yeah, you. Face that way. Uh, is, is it Debbie? Deborah? Deborah. Run in front of her quickly. <laughs> Bye. Change. Change residential change. It's going to be bigger, it's going to be better, and things are going to flow together, and it's not going to be here. But God is going to work. I don't understand why, because honestly, I told Jeanette, I said, I said, that woman is quality. She says, Mark, if I had a hundred like these, we could be running a thousand. <laughs> because she's a servant, servant. She's quality. She, she don't get ticked and don't whine. Some of you get ticked and whine because somebody don't give you attention all the time. <laughs> bye bye. Change is coming to your residency. And it's going to turn out 
to be without a doubt God causing it to be. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Bless the Lamb. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anything else? Say one penny. Your thoughts to have 5,000 can start with one penny. One penny. What are you going to do with your life? What are you going to do when you can own an apartment complex? Yeah, you. But see, we don't see these things. But see, by association, there's impartation. By association, there's elevation. You keep your company as nothing but leeches. What the leech do sucks life out and don't put no life in. Yes, sir. Who has pain? You'll get rid of it. How's your knee? I'm overwhelmed. You will do 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 what? I'm overwhelmed. Isn't that nice? See these people falling out? Oh, yes. These people falling out. I've never witnessed this before. My knee is tender. But my faith, these people falling out. I'm like, but when I stood here, with all my heart, I'm telling the truth, telling all of you that might be doubtful, when I stood right here, and you did, I got, I literally got dizzy. Not dizzy. <laughs> I got off balance. And I was like, well, I'm trying to adjust to stand up. <laughs> no. Can I borrow Blondie? For me to get up that fast, I'm going to walk on right here. Keep going. I, I am just Somebody knowing that it's the Holy Spirit. Come here. I'm knowing that it's the Holy Spirit. You know the anointing is to contagious. To see people fall out. And I'm thinking, are they all right? Bring her over here front way. But I've got a nephew that's had this where he was slain in the Spirit for yeah. a long oh, time. time. And Can you hold her hand? <sighs> Keep talking. Anyway, um, I, you know, I've witnessed the Holy Spirit before. I know He dwells within me every day and making changes in my life. And I don't know what you may be afflicted with or what you're needing, but God does. And whatever prayers and power that this man behind you has to slay you in the Spirit, I praise that and honor it and whatever it is that you need. I pray to be slain in the Spirit. You ever heard that song? Oh, it is Jesus, wonderful Jesus. Oh, it is Jesus down in my soul. For I have touched the hill of His garment, and His blood has made me whole. Sing it again. Oh, it is Jesus, wonderful Jesus. Oh, it is Jesus down in my soul. For I have touched the hem of His garment and His blood has made me whole. Remember the woman that had the issue of blood said, if I may but touch. She could have been stoned to death for being in the crowd. But she said, forget y'all, I'm going after him. And she touched him and he said, who touched me? And the disciples said, everybody's touching you. You're losing it. And he looked at her and she ran up to him and she said, and Jesus said, Be healed. Amen. Jesus, be the Lord of all. Jesus, be the Lord of all. Jesus, be the Lord of all. The kingdom of my heart. Lord, to you I surrender all. You're not Lord. Lord, to you I surrender all. Lord, to you I surrender all. 
<laughs> the kingdom of my heart. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. You got the mic. <laughs> Can you, uh, Blondie, come back here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Come here, darling. <laughs> Sit by this lady. See, I want you and what's on you to jump on her. Because right. see, laughter is medicine. And see, you wouldn't let me sit beside you and put my arm around you. <laughs>
totally unscripted, just by the Spirit of God. How it flows is how it flows. And I pray right now over every every word that was spoken out of Pastor Mark White. I don't know why I keep saying that. Because it's prophecy. <laughs> well, true. I shouldn't say I don't know why. But that's the word that I keep. You know, you like to introduce people by their title. And that's just, I can't get away from it. I never liked being called a prophet anyway. So, you can come to church rocks. <laughs> If a true Old Testament prophet would enter into somebody's life, they wouldn't ask for a house or car or stuff or whatever. They'd be going, oh my God, leave me. But when a prophet showed up at your house, it wasn't to prophesy a house, a it new boat, right. right. none of that stuff. It means you are in the hot seat. Most of the time. Everyone feel feelings are neither right nor wrong. It's what you do with them that causes the problem. But everybody good? Everybody feel okay? How about pain? Okay. There's a harmony of mercy and grace and the glory of God flowing in Amen. to every spirit fills with the love yes. of the Christ that have died for them. Yes. And he will drive out yes. all yes. those things that we think and desire and show himself the greater desire of our life. Yes. He is a spirit of love. He is a spirit of righteousness. Yes. And the righteousness is going to fill into his body. Amen. Into each and every one Amen. who is wanting and needing for the love of Christ to come into them. Into the flowing river of life, yeah. the flowing yeah. grace of mercy, yeah. the flowing love of God that is going to raise you up in the house of the Lord. Yeah. And you will be a stranger forevermore and a beauty forevermore and a fire that will loosen and come forth and know that you are a son of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Our wants and his wants to do things, do so to answer your question a while ago and you said do I have to interpret it? Apparently not. Yeah. It is so awesome being here in the presence of you guys. It is really, really amazing to see what God's doing in each and every body, each and every life. Some of you we've known years ago. Some of you were just meeting. It's, it's a joy to, to see what God's doing in your heart and your life. And it's always been wonderful. But it's always been worth it. But wait there's more. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she, she just pointed the monitor back there, so apparently you can see the same one. I'll be in Hartford tonight. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Woo, glory. Hartsburg, Missouri. Walk yeah, somewhere. Pastor Mark White. I know it says prophet, but I just actually hate you. <laughs> Is that a desire of your heart to be a pastor again? Yes. Yeah. I can have stability and consistency and in part raise up and still travel. Because I've already <coughs> pastored four churches and always have I traveled. My job is to reproduce and not stay in one place. So you're ready to teach and correct? Yep, yep, yep. Break legs? Yep, yep. The Old Testament? Shepherds, that's, I mean, that's the shepherds. I'm not saying Old Testament. I guess shepherds still today will do this. One of the flock wanders, they get a broken leg. I've even invited them after while I was preaching. I said, Yeah, y'all don't like what I'm saying? Meet me after church and we can fight it out. 
God's going to grant you the desires of your heart. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Amen. yes. Not too much longer. Yes. Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. God's at work. God's at work. And you don't be surprised where it's located. <laughs> I'm still begging him not to take his ways to my baby. <laughs> we say anything about that? Praise God. Hallelujah. I just heard, don't be surprised where it's going, where you're going to be located. Oh. The location. Relationships. Yeah. Praise God. I receive. Amen. I receive. Right. Prophet George. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Careful. <laughs> They've known to do that once or twice. Hallelujah. Prophecy is not that difficult, folks. It's usually that gut instinct or that first word that pops into your head when you see somebody or you, you know. There's nothing I will do that. Um, probably coming up sometime soon. I have like a prophetic. I'm not going to say I'm not going to call it conference. Uh -huh. Workshop, whatever you want to call it, but just you're going to find out how easy it is. Now, being a prophet and being able to prophesy, two different things. Two different things. Because you'll be on the job, you'll be at Walmart, you'll be wherever, and it's like you'll get a something for you. See somebody, boom, something drops in your spirit. That's prophecy. That's an understanding word. A yeah, word of knowledge, a good way to put it. For somebody. And it could be the one thing that they're waiting to hear. Because not everybody has the hope of glory. Somebody might be you've heard the stories of somebody who just well today I'm just going to end it all. But then they get a phone call. Or they get a visitation from somebody. And it changed their whole life. Somebody's life is in the balance with the words God puts in you. Don't be afraid to share it. It's like riding a bike or learning to ride a bike. Yep. How many times did you fall learning to ride that bicycle? Scrape the knees. Chip teeth. You got back up and tried it again. Watching these babies learning to walk. They don't know failure. That's something we've learned over the years. Failure. Fear. They persevere. They're going to get it right. They're going to keep trying until they get it right. And that's the way we should be. We can learn a lot from, little, from our little ones. They have the perseverance that some of us have lost. I mean, each day with a new, newfound joy. Because every, you know, it renews our joy in the morning. Anyway, he delivered the message. So, everybody, hearts and conscience, or everything's clear? Yeah. How about you, Blondie? How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Blondie, what is your name, by the way? What? Oh, my name is Sierra. Sierra. Mm -hmm. It's your first time here. Yeah, and my first time. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, Newbies. I, I, I love it. I, I would like to share something with you guys about this whole thing. I'm not here to offend anybody, but no, this, I shared this with her. <laughs> And I kind of got up in her ear just now, a few minutes ago, and I said, um, you know, um, when we were over there laughing, it was beginning to get on my nerves. <laughs> and I thought to myself, now, you know, just let that go and focus on what Mark White was talking about here. And you continued on laughing. And I started thinking to myself, how disrespectful. <laughs> this man is trying to talk and, and, and 
she just keeps laughing. Is that real? Is she really doing that? Or is she just putting that on? I started, I tried to put it in my head again. And pretty soon I started thinking, she's not going to stop. <laughs> and what about that woman sitting next to her? That would drive me crazy sitting next to her. That would get on my last nerve. I may would have to say to her, could you silence yourself? I had no idea. Mark White didn't know I was thinking those thoughts. Come and brought this woman and put her right beside me. <laughs> I talk a lot, but for me to get silence is like speechless. People that really know me like, no, not you. Speechless. I, I want to go out in the car and write down everything that happened today because I don't want to forget one minute of it. And, um, it's on Facebook. You can watch it again. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So I will never forget Sierra because this laughing while she's been here by me, it has been so uplifting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. And to find out it was a, both our very first time here. <laughs> I know. I know. So thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this day here and help you back many times. Mark White, I wanted to say to you, I didn't know if I get to see you after this. You're being on fire for the Lord and your your sermon today, your teaching today has touched multi facets. Yes. In my life. Yeah. That's it. That's it. So must have been here today when you were here. Yes. Amen. I'll just see you again. Amen. Thank you for the whole message. Can I get a hug? Let you walk. Oh, praise God. Yeah. From Louisiana, but I've been in Nashville since '93. Mm -hmm. My husband's from Canada. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm from Rouge. When you started talking, I was like, I'm all like this boy right now. I can yeah. tell I love that about you. Uh -huh. And man, can you deliver a message on fire? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 I'm glad you said that. Mentioned that. A lot of times, he'll leave. Or anybody that comes in and ministers to the Word of God. Not <coughs> the feedback is very important. He's oh, contagious. You know, I wish he was my neighbor. Maybe. Don't be surprised. <laughs> I got a couple of things. I'm going to try to make this quick. Um, okay, I've never been to Robin's Attic next door. Oh yeah, this and um, one of one of our sisters here usually takes care of the plants and stuff. And uh, I had told her I'd do that for her while she's out of town. And I stopped in yesterday to uh, do that. And I was getting ready to leave, and some said, "Go next door." Cindy and I've been friends for a long time. We went to school together. Haven't seen each other in probably forty years. Wow. What a God set up. It was a divine appointment. Yeah. <laughs> and she ain't lying when she talks about she doesn't have a loss for words. No. Okay. I mean, she did all the talking in there. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. till, till I asked her where she goes to church. Yeah. Wow. And told her that we were doing the Bay of Satan and she was like, I'll be there. Yes. Uh -huh. And she was here this morning and she heard us praying. Yes. And she, she ain't lying. Holy Spirit, that was a divine appointment because this message, well, no, not only was it for the rest of us, but it was tailor-made for that beautiful woman. Amen. 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 You know, and as, as we were praying this morning before the service, the Lord had something for you too, brother. The tears that you have cried that no one knows. He has every one of you. Amen. And He is birthing something soon for you. Praise God. It is coming to fruition. Amen. Because of your obedience and your steadfastness. 
and you're hunkering mm -hmm. down and just seeking him and nobody else. Yay. It's coming. It was the lady in the mustard yellow, okay. and when you came in, I said, Cindy. Cindy, yeah. Cindy. And so I was like, I love your your yellow. <laughs> and then I was standing back there talking to Teresa, and it's like God said that you've got to have the faith of a childlike. A mustard seed. Yes. So it's going to continue to flourish. Yes. You have your faith. Yes. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Yes. He also said, Welcome home. Oh, I'm telling you, I just, there's so many wonderful things about what I've experienced here today. Cindy, Lucinda Johnson, yeah. Yeah. is my niece by marriage. Okay? Oh, awesome. And so, um, you know, her involvement here, she used to go to Journey Church, that's where I went. And so her involvement here, um, she's enlightened me about when it very first started, and she spoke to my daughter, Georgia. And um, they started talking about the um, the youth dance, interpretive dance, that kind of thing. And I saw some videos of it, mm -hmm. but I didn't know it was in this building. <laughs> <laughs> it was somewhere in Troy, that's all I knew. And my daughter came back home, she's 33, and she's like, Mom, you'll love it. That there are, because I love gospel music, and it's very hard to find gospel music. And it's not just about that, but she said, I, I really would like for you to try it sometime, Mom, and I'll go with you. And I said, we could do that, you know. But yesterday, yeah, when I got up, after my prayer time, I had no idea. Jesus was taking the wheel, honey. Amen. And we go over and see Robin, and it all just some history from that. Wow. <laughs> God is so good. We all know that. Yes. How that's abundant blessing. Work. In the blue cap, go over. We want to hear how he came to God. Oh, Joe. Oh, Joe. Oh, Jesus. Hi, Joe. Come on. Justify. 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 Well, apparently. Yeah, it's yeah, you. So, uh, want to know how I came to know Jesus? Um, are you ready for this? Yeah, come on. We want to hear it again. How far back do you want me to go? Um, Hot Springs, Arkansas. Oh, yeah, I first met George in Hot Springs, Arkansas when I was 13. Uh, him and uh, Jeanette were uh, youth leaders at the church I went to. And, um, I didn't see them for a long time after that. I'm 20 something years before I saw them again. Uh, but um, tell you a little bit about my past. Uh, I uh, was married to a, a Mexican lady, and she went back to Mexico, and I started going back and forth to Mexico a lot. And uh, my uh, health started getting bad. And I was approached by some people that said, we can help you out. We got an opportunity, you know, you uh, sell some drugs for us. And uh, I started doing that uh, later, going back, uh, to Mexico, back and forth to Mexico. They uh, approached me about entering a drug cartel. And um, I entered a drug cartel. I trafficked drugs and uh, operated as a coyote. I brought drugs into and around this country. I smoked people into and around this country. Um, later, I became addicted to drugs. Uh, I abandoned my family. I committed adultery. I was a really bad guy. Um, I used to tell people that uh, I worked for the devil. They would see me and they would see the connections I had and they asked me who I worked for and I, I was uh, pretty proud about it. I tell them that I worked for the devil. Uh, I used to practice Santa Maria. I used to pray to the saints, uh, drug trafficking saints, the saint of the dead. Um, a lot of bad things were going on in my life, and um, I eventually got caught up in going to casinos. Uh, it was an endless cycle. I would waste all of my money at casinos. I'd go out and sell drugs, and it was just an endless cycle. I was addicted to drugs, and uh, eventually that lifestyle spiraled me down and down and down, and I went to prison. And I thank God for that, that I went to prison, because in that prison, I found a Bible, and I started reading the Bible. 
And, oh. and Jesus came to me and he he set me free of all my addictions. Yes. And, uh, he gave me a new heart. He gave me a new heart and uh I've been serving the Lord since then. Amen. From this day forward, the past is dead. And every word that comes out of your mouth, we want to hear Jesus. We want to know that He is working in your heart and your spirit and your soul. And we don't care about the past. We care, care about your future. Yes. Oh, uh, currently I'm ministering inside the jail here in Troy, yes. and uh, I've been doing it about three weeks. Uh, God told me when I got out of prison that I was going to be ministering in the jails, and it's it's Manifest. finally coming to pass. And uh, two, three weeks ago, we had ten people in the uh, jails uh, saved, and this last Friday we baptized six people. Five or six <laughs> He takes all that bad stuff and all that hurt and he, he changes it and he changes you and uh, he uses that for his work. And I just I thank God for that. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your testimony. Amen. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Heard the phrase, out of your misery comes your ministry. Yes. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. You have a word to give. Amen. Yeah, you have a word in you. You have a gift in you. It's called peace. It's called love. It's called mercy. And it's God in you that you can live with for the days of your life. Be of joy. And know that he has called you for the purpose of walking with other people and they suddenly realize that there's something different about you and they're going to ache. Yes, Careful, Pops. Guilty by association. <laughs> I'll see you pointing at him. More long, Pops will prophesy. That's right. Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Amen. 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 Amen